Indeed, Lebo. Well, Zuida Zwane, uh, Ndwande rather, uh, the talented South African bassist, composer, and co-founder of the renowned seven-piece Afro jazz band Kujenga, is buzzing with excitement as he prepares for this year's Jazz in the Light Festival. Known for his dynamic bass playing skills and innovative compositions, Zuida is no stranger to captivating audiences with his music. Kujenga is poised to deliver a performance that is both soul-staring and memorable. The collective is also working on their new album and the composer joins us now in studio to tell us more. Zuida Galang, very good morning, man. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thanks, for Tuam. How are you? Good. How are you, man? Good, good. Thanks good for having Good to see us. you. Good to have you on the show. Yes, yes, yes. Um, All right. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the key inspirations behind your compositions in preparation for Jazz in the Light Festival. Um, a lot of the inspirations come from lived experiences by um, particularly marginalized people in this world, in this country. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the experiences of anti-blackness, the experiences of um, the troubles that come with global capital and the ways that it has made people more vulnerable to uh, oppressive institutions and systems. A lot of that has grounded the music that we do because they not only affect uh, systemic issues, but they affect personal lives as well. Mm, mm. And uh, I believe that as artists, we have a responsibility to use the platform to share and highlight and also conscientize our listeners about the ways in which we are no we're, we're not as free as we want to be, yeah. you know, and uh, I believe that a lot of the musicians we grew up listening to, uh, from Fela Kuti to Huma Sekela to Mamiri Makeba, mm -hmm. use their platforms to highlight the same things that we as young artists can still do today. And the question uh, still remains, are you doing that? I mean, are you highlighting some of these issues we've just highlighted through your music? And do those issues such as oppression and so on find expression in the lyrical content of your music? Um, well, the instrumental content, because it's just the instrumental jazz band. And okay. I would say that it does. It does mostly because we have an opportunity to share what the songs come, where the songs come from, what okay. their meanings are, particularly on our media platforms and ourselves as musicians. We also get involved uh, in um, gatherings, activists and protests. Uh, um, back in Cape Town where we're from, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's dealing with uh, the climate issues or it's dealing with what is happening in Palestine, we also have to you know, talk the talk yeah, and walk yeah. the walk, sorry, as much as we talk the talk. Uh -huh. And we believe that our music also does that. Um, if, you want, if one has to have a listen to what we're talking about, they will see that we're doing what we can to make sure that there's an awareness being spread about yes. the conditions of our current state of affairs. Yes, yes. Let's talk about uh, you know, how your musical influence shapes your sound. Sure. Um, wow. What can I say? I mean, the musical influences start with what we grew up listening to. You know, what our parents were playing, whether it was Babeg Mseleku or Moses Mulelekwa or Jimmy Zulu, uh, Musim Shlongo. All those musicians play a part in the compositions that have been written, not just by me, but by the band as well. Okay. Um, and how it, how it continues is I believe that the music that we make um, is known as jazz, but we prefer black improvised music. Mm. It's a lineage, you know, and it, mm. it comes mm. from an understanding that this is passed down as uh, one would pass down things um, when you're taking it to the next generation. And yeah. we're hoping that what we're doing is just continuing this wonderful art form. And hopefully the next generation after us will be able to say, not only do they look at us, but they looked at those who came before us as well. Mm, mm. Yeah. And it's good to see that you guys have discovered your sense of purpose in terms of your craft and Thanks, in terms man. of you know, sharing some of the pertinent messages that need to be shared yeah. with the rest of the world through your craft and through what you do. Let us talk about your uh, collaborative process with Gujenga when making new music. How does that one go? Yeah, it's uh, usually one is inspired you know, one person in the band is inspired to come up with the composition and they're like, hey guys, I have this song, can we try it out? They usually work on their arrangement. And I, I guess for this album that actually just came out this week in the wake, uh, we uh, found ourselves in a, a position where I was coming up with most of the uh, music and sharing it to the band. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's just how it's worked for us. Um, I feel like on the next album, it might be someone else's turn to come up with you know, mm -hmm. the compositions mm -hmm. and share it. And uh, yeah, that's how we go. And we allow the live performances to also breathe new life into it. Okay. So one is able to also able to add and contribute things that I didn't necessarily think of adding and stuff that makes the song much fuller and brighter than I would imagine okay. when I first came up with it, yeah. So you guys released a new album this week? On Wednesday, yeah, the day before Shopful Day. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, oh. it's called In the Wake, and it speaks to some of the things that we've been discussing already. Right, and right. Uh, it's probably the reason why we're even on this platform right now, okay. as we've uh, uh, had a high anticipation for the release. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it can continue to push the band to newer heights and also to get the message of the music out there. Mm, mm. Yeah. So how does your South African heritage influence the kind of music that you guys create? Heavily. Um, I mean, I think when you think about jazz music or improvised music, you must uh, understand that it also comes from music from rural communities, music from yeah. the church, mm. music from very different understandings of indigenous life in South Africa. Mm. Whether we're talking um, Kosa based jazz music or Sesotho based jazz music or music from KwaZulu Natal that has an influence um, in the way that the understanding of uh, jazz is played, you know, because it comes from the black American tradition. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, we being South African, we've added its own kind of energy and, and, and sound to it. And I do believe that the identity that comes from the different cultural groups um, makes it such a unique style of, of improvised music. I know globally around the world, each location and country has their own flavor, but mm -hmm. I guess because we have such a various amount of indigenous groups and ethnic groups, we've allowed ourselves to create a, a newer sound to the, the, the improvised music tradition. Uh -huh. yeah. And you guys are so young, like literally <laughs> all of you are so young. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. good to see, you know, the younger breed taking um, an, an otherwise known uh, genre that yeah. is known to be, you know, for older Badad. folk. Yeah. Uh, Badad yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> so um, are you making this genre appealing to the younger people, the younger population, so that it, it transcends all yeah. age groups? I think it's happened naturally that way. Um, one thing that people note, particularly the older crowd, is that when they see the performances, they get shocked to see that many young people at a yes. quote-unquote jazz yeah. performance. And I think the one thing that we must also say is that as much as it is a art form that comes from um, elders and I guess a, a level of ancestry, um, we're still very much, you know, 20-somethings, some of us are Gen Zs, you know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, we, we are part of that generation of TikTok and social media and stuff like that. So that's still who we are in essence because of just that's the age group that we're part of. But I think we're finding ways to make an intergenerational conversation with that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. finding ourselves um, not so, um, 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 I guess, like, we, we're just as much as focus on the past as we are on the present and the future mm -hmm. as well. And uh, we don't want to um, have a thing of disconnecting time. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I would say to that. It's an interesting thing because young people have been definitely the ones who've been supporting us and I guess breaking the stereotype that no, this music is for a certain age group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know that, uh, you know, the younger folk, uh, you know, have a heightened sense of creativity in terms of uh, 100%. adding just about any flavor into yeah. a musical, you know, a mu musical flavor that yes. you guys create. So. Are you adding a youthful flavor into jazz music or are you <laughs> just going to let jazz music be? No, we're not adding log drums and uh, all of those things that you hear. But um, <laughs> yeah, I would say that the, the youthful flavor comes, I guess, essentially from the fact that we are also inspired by contemporary artists. Sure. You know, um, artists who are maybe slightly older than us that we can regard as elder brothers and sisters in this uh, uh, community of artists. Um, so I would say that the, the youthful flavor just comes from the sense that when you hear it, it doesn't necessarily sound dated from mm. a particular time mm. period before us. Having said that though, it does pull from those things. It's, it's, it's very much based on a tradition and a history of this uh, music and right. this right. You know, story of South African people. Okay. All right. Great chatting to you, man. Thank Thanks, you so man. much for joining us. It's sure, an absolute sure, sure. pleasure having you. Jazz okay. in the Light, just briefly. Yes, uh, we're so excited. This is a big one for us. We are making yeah. our debut appearance at nice. the Jazz nice. in the Light performance uh, at Joe Big Zoo. The tickets are available on Web Ticket, and we are part of a stacked lineup, including some of those <laughs> elders that we spoke about. <laughs> but a lot of our influences on this, Sia Makuzeni, Ndutuso Makatini, Mbusokoza, Andi Leyenana, and we're just so grateful that we have the opportunity to say that we shared the lineup with such, such, such heavy hitters and icons within the jazz mm -hmm. um, world, and also to share uh, a lineup on such a big platform that mm -hmm. is the Jazz in the Light. So we're looking forward to that one. It's the wrap of our tour in Johannesburg, okay. actually. All the best, man. Thank, Thank you so you, much man. for joining us. Thanks, man. Great stuff. Sure. That was South African bassist, composer, and co-founder of the collective Bujenga, Zuid and Randwe, talking to us about the upcoming album as well as their performance.